follow-ups, and then I'll, oh yeah, because we have to bring it, like, at least into the 80s. Oh. <laughs> Tristan's no, very programmatic. It's like, a, it's like a generational thing. We've got we've to hit the decades. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so, how did, tell us just the birth of On Our Backs. How okay. did it happen? So that no lag convention I told you about was 81 or 82. Um, I finally finished college. I was one of those people who was in it forever. I went to Alaska because I was going to make a million dollars on a fishing boat. <laughs> Things didn't work out. I hitchhiked back through the Yukon Territory. I was involved in one of the first lesbian inseminations on the way home. Then, when I got back, on the boat, it's in the boat. <laughs> I was. Uh, <coughs> I was trying to find a job and I got two interviews. One was to be one of the, the lane changers who moves the cone on the bridge during the rush hour. Just imagine if I had said yes to that. And the other one was to work one lousy day a week at a vibrator store for women. And being there and meeting my boss, Joni Blank, who told me she didn't give a damn if I sold one thing all day, that she was a philanthropist and that this was all about sex education was a total thrill. I love being an educator, and I love that hardly anyone came in all day, and we have plenty of time to talk about any, everything. And our bookcase was like the size of this table. There were hardly any books, and people would come in looking for contemporary erotic material, you know, pictures, stories, something that they could relate to. And I would say, wow, you know, Anais Nin wrote this in 1927. It's not bad, you know? It was like, what could pick up the Nancy Friday Secret Garden, I would say, don't read any of the text in between the fantasies. Just read the fantasies. Ignore the shaming Freudian freakout explanation. Just ignore that part. And around that time, Joni and I started talking about what would it be like if we published women's erotic stories. And also at that time, I was madly in love, and I wrote poetry, and I gave a reading with a bunch of other friends. I mean, I was nobody. It was just an anarchist bookstore. They encouraged poetry. And I read this um, really hard rockin' sex poem about my lover at the time. And the next day, I got, nobody does this anymore, a handwritten letter from this woman named Myrna Alana who said, we are starting a magazine called On Our Backs, and I love your poem. My poem, that's how it all started. And uh, we would like to put it in and anything else you have. Oh, I was so flattered. I never had anyone praise my, my writing, a stranger like this. And I wrote her back, oh, yes, I'm dying to. I noted the address. I gave her my phone number. I never heard anything. And the months were going by. And so I went to that address and knocked on the door. Maybe I left a note the first time, but I said, I was wondering if you need any help. I've done underground newspapers for years. I know how to do everything, typeset, wax, layout, paste. I knew all this old technology of how to put up a magazine or a newspaper. I can do anything. This is the most awesome idea. We have to, you know, like, let's get cracking. And they relented. They called, I came in, and, you know, we had, we, so many of the people that you heard about today in that earlier um, sex and feminism and, and the sex wars, some of those folks were some of the first contributors. And my lover at the time, Honey Lee, she did a bull dagger of the month centerfold. Mm -hmm. That was the best centerfold we ever did, and I'll tell you why. It was this picture of her looking really gnarly, just complete bull dagger with her brushy silver hair sticking straight up and her dark raccoon eyes and her belly hanging over her white underwear and a white men's shirt. I mean, she just looked like ferocious. But we did it Playboy style, so on the other side it had turn-ons, turn-offs. <laughs> and I found these cute little pictures of her growing up in Michigan when she was just a little girl. And you remember that picture, Erica? There's one where she's defiantly reading little Lulu comics in her overalls while her mother curls her hair and she just hates it. You know, like young Butch who's hating getting her hair curled. And that centerfold, there were three action reactions, and then I'll shut up. 
One, our favorite, of course, were the women who wrote Honey Lee. One of them sent a picture of herself from Texas masturbating to the centerfold. I was like, oh my God, you hit a bullseye. That is awesome. This is the first time we have documented evidence of a lesbian getting off to lesbian-made porn. This is so excellent. <laughs> to find out what happened to that woman. She was so hot. Number two, um, we had women who wrote us and said, this is disgusting. Don't you know what a beautiful woman looks like? Have you, would you like me to send you a copy of Penthouse? These disgusting butches, they're gross. I never want to see this again, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, hmm, interesting. It just goes to show I told you that women were getting off on men's pornography all this time, you know, and, um, so it's, but we don't have a discussion yet. Well, you know, why should she be your cup of tea? Why should she, you know, like, this is the first issue. Do you want to be the centerfold next time? Or the person that you think so great? Why don't you show your face, right? Number three, I would say this was the classic feminist movement reaction. Dear Honor Pax, I do not know how to feel about your son of fault. What if she is not a good person? I do not know her politics. I cannot decide whether I should attempt to jill off to this picture when I do not know where she stands on ecology, race relations, veganism. That I was, I was like, we have our work cut out for us. These people are just so messed up. Like, you know, I wrote this one letter. I was like, have you ever, like, somebody ever handed you a bouquet of roses and you just smelled it and it felt good? Like, can you get in touch with just appreciating sensuality and beauty and, and tenderness and excitement and sounds and smell? I mean, just, can you feel it? Like, I would just, was, that was tough. So there you go. Does that take you into the 80s? All right. <laughs>